Growing up as a kid in Oklahoma, where I'm from, the Chili Bowl is the biggest race that we have. The Chili Bowl has kind of been my favorite race of the year. Growing up a dirt racer in Oklahoma, that's kind of the Holy Grail. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. It is Friday night. This is Racebot TV live on the iRacing Esports Network. And that means 
one thing and one thing only. It is time for Friday Night Prime Time. This is a series that you, the iRacing community, get to decide what we show each and every season. And this season, it's all about the Formula Renault 3.5 Championship. So hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Autodromo Enzo Edino Ferrari. Welcome to Imola. This track has been for a number of configurations over the years. We see the Brazilian flag at the side of Tamburello. Of course, that is where in 1994, it was a dark day for Imola. They reprofiled the track in 1995, and then after it was dropped from the Formula 1 calendar, they reprofiled it again, which means that instead of the final chicane, it's straight on and flat out to the start-finish line. Today we've got ourselves a healthy set of 25 drivers looking to do battle here and qualifying is already underway. Here's a look at your track conditions. 27 degrees Celsius here today. 13 kilometer wind out speeds and a humidity of 43%. Partially cloudy skies. Let's get you then to the action on track. Victor Preto is currently the driver who's gone fastest. Let's go on board though. We're the driver of Oli Quoker right now. As he is on a lap, putting himself down into Aquaman Arale. Up the hill, now down towards the third of the three chicanes, they say. There used to only be two, then there was four, and now we're back down to three. And a third of the three chicanes then for Oli Quoker, and it's a run now down into Ravata Corner. Victor Preto has the qualifying lead right now over Stephen Gatesman. Rob Boa in third, Danny Garcia Filo in fourth, and Sergio Machias rounds out your top five. Villa Lepola in sixth place as Filo, by the way, just moves himself up into second. On the Quoker pass, start finish line. And he will head himself onto the grid in a position of 16th place for the time being. Steven Chantal just heading himself past the start finish line. Where will he put himself into ninth? And it looks like he's still got himself a lap to go. So he's going to head himself down into Tamburello Corner again. He'll put the trachometer up on the right hand side. Let's listen in. Villeneuve. Slight uphill braking zone now into Tosa, the slowest corner on the racetrack. Here on in, it's a short, flat out run over the crest. It's blind as you make your apex into the sweeping left hand here. They put a little bit of runoff error on the outside, so you can run a little bit wide on the curves. Now you're into Aqua Minerali, the right hander. The left up the hill you come again and now towards up third you came we already talked about in terms of incident points this is one track where you do see drivers occasionally going over that number you can see how tippy Stephen Chantel was in these high downforce low to the ground cars like Formula Renault 3.5s so like Formula 1 cars we are going to see a lot of people tiptoe through that we've seen Morgan Morand Go to the top of the timing stands. We stay on board with Chantel for the moment. That's a 126.531 from Morgan Moran. Stephen Chantel past the start finish line. And he will remain in the 11th position. Moran will only do one lap. Matteo Calastani will just have a look at him. He moves himself up into ninth place. But that is, for the most part, qualifying over and done with. Morgan Moran, a last lap effort there. 126.531 moves himself almost half a second ahead of anyone else on your field here today. As we have a look overhead at this track, nestled near uh, sorry, Milan even. I almost said Le Mans. Nestled near Milan. It was actually referred to as the San Marino Grand Prix as its entire time in the Formula 1 calendar. It's a fast track. A track that you've got to get used to, knowing when to run over the curbs. But we've got ourselves now just 45 seconds, waiting really for one driver, Andreas Nilsson. He is on track. Let's listen in with him real quick.
But as you can see, Nilsson is nowhere near going to be able to complete the lap on time. 10 seconds now is all that is remaining in terms of qualifying. So let's run you through your starting grid for this edition of Friday Night Prime Time. Morgan Moran, pole position 126.531. A half a second faster than anyone else on the field. Victor Preto will line up blow alongside him on the front row of the grid. Danny Garcia Filo in third place. Stephen Gatesman in fourth position. We head on back. It is Sergio Matias in fifth place. Rob Boa in sixth. Villa Lepela in seventh place. Manu Domingo in eighth. And then Matteo Calistani in nine, Torby and Fowler running out your top ten. Rest of those qualifying results are coming up on their screen for you now. Twenty-four drivers set themselves a qualifying time. One driver did not. That's the driver Nielsen that we saw. We starting from the very rear of your field here this evening. Live timing and scoring will be available when this race gets going. Just visit racebar.tv forward slash timing for that one. And let's just very quickly give a shout out to the people who get it done. As ever, Estevan Balau, trackcams22.com. Andres Warner, and one Design. Simon Grossman at Janine.com. Nick Thisson for Racebot TV. Live timing and scoring. 22 laps. That is the distance here today. And the Formula Renault 3.5 Championship. Lights go on on top of the gantry. Let's get ourselves ready then for 22 laps worth of racing. Live from Imola. Let's start. Right about now. Cars all storming themselves down in towards Tamburello Chicane for the first time. Are they all going to be able to survive the first couple of corners? The answer is out front. Your top couple of drivers are. Yep, two. Oh, we got a trouble at the rear of the field. Two drivers have had incidents at the rear of the field. But apart from that, Everyone has got themselves overweight. Oh, my word. That's your race leader, Morgan Moran. He has just gone off down at Villeneuve, the first lap of this motor race. Morgan Moran has just gone off, and he's now falling down. We can get the graphic up in a minute. Down into sixth place in your field right now. Morgan Moran will get ourselves a replay of that one. That was crazy. This was then down. First part was fine. This was heading himself down through Tamburello. Now into Villeneuve. You can just see that car is going to push off there. He just hits the curb, gets himself off, and as a consequence of that one, well, Morgan Moran is now all the way down your field. Let's go back to live pictures right now. And you can see Morgan Moran, we're back on board of him. He's down into sixth place as a consequence of that one. And oh my word, from the race lead all the way down to P number six for the driver Morgan Moran. What a crazy start then for him at this start of this race. Stephen Chantal is a driver who had incident and Ruslan Sabatov down on pit road as well as Lepala. They were the two drivers at the rear of the field that had incident. But what this all means is that it's Victor Preto who now leads the way. And he's got himself an early advantage as well. It is 1.1 seconds right now over Danny Garcia Filo as they head themselves into Tosa. Once again, Filo battling out a little bit with Sergio Macias. That is for third place. Four place Moran now. Moran up into fourth. The timing and scoring just glitching out a little bit because we had two drivers retire at the start of this one. But you can see Moran is now running in P at number four. Ahead of them. I'm not sure if a Filo had a slowdown penalty, which is completely offline on well, the run down into Alcamino Raleigh just then. But we saw, yeah, indeed, I think he has had a slowdown penalty. Danny Garcia Filo is falling down into fourth place. That looks like he went a little bit off at the Villeneuve chicane, maybe cut the course a tiny bit. So Filo 
is down. And these drivers are really struggling here. Actually, no, I take this back. It looks like Philo has got some form of damage to that number six car. He's fallen now down into fifth place. Manny Domingo has got up one position ahead of him. Um, and also, whilst we're showing that, Morgan Moran has got himself back past Sergio Macias. Macias caught napping a little bit by the Villo situation. That means Moran is back up into second place, but the gap is going to be a big one. 2.6 seconds as they cross the start finish line with the gap between Moran and Preto. And if I was Moran, I'd expect him to be using a lot of DRS here early to try and claw some of that gap back in. Having a look through your field, you've got battles going on all, all over the field here today, by the way. 22 lap race, it will go through quickly. Roboa, oh, he's just gone very slowly through Tosa. Again, maybe getting a slowdown penalty, running high over the curbs. The number 11 car has lost two positions, three positions actually, to Andres Nielsen, Lubin Morik, and John Matutzenson. So he's fallen right down outside of your top 15 to the 20th position. But I want to go back on board with Danny Garcia Filler right now because he had what I think is a slowdown penalty. He's got that speed back up. But all of a sudden right now, as he heads himself down into the third chicane, um, it looks as though that, yeah, Danny Garcia Filo, um, he's actually got his speed back up just a little bit as they work themselves down towards Ravazza once again. Victor Preto then is your race leader. Morgan Morand in second place. Third place, Sergio Matias. Fourth place, Manny Duingo. And then Philo rounds out your top five. Matteo Calistani. We just go and cycle through to him. He is in P number six right now. He's got himself Stephen Gatesman behind as you just ride on board from the rear for a moment with Matteo Calistani. towards Villeneuve then for Matteo Calistani and Stephen Gates when they stay line of stern you can see actually uh, already Morgan Moran has pulled out a gap over Sergio Matias is now he's putting that pressure back on towards Victor Preto the last time by a 127.8 there for Morgan Moran that was get this one second faster almost than Victor Preto on their third tour around this racetrack so there's a lot of action to go on here for the moment, though, we go on board with Stephen Gatesman into Akuminarati, out of Akuminarati, up the hill, and down towards the third chicane one more time. Gatesman, uh, that last time by, is just working through. Um, and as he heads himself past the start, past so, that third chicane, down towards Ravatsa once again. So Stephen Gatesman, there we are. He is still running in that P7 position. Matteo Calistani running in P number six. Morgan Moran, however, let's go back on board of him as he tries to close down that gap towards the race lead. The gap is one second right now as we go on board with Moran. As Morgan Moran then heading himself now down towards the Villeneuve chicane to give, give you an update. We did see it at the very top of our screen at the start of this race. We had Villa Lapala and Ruslan Sabatov off on corner number one down at Tamborello. We had Steven Chantel who had an incident as well on the opening lap of this motor race. We then had Morgan Moran who lost himself a couple of positions by going off wide at Villeneuve corner on the first lap and that is why He's currently 1.1 second back from Victor Preto. Top eight, then down at the bottom of your screen. Worth noting, Alistair Hay and Jaden Turlo, they are having a little bit of a scrap going on right now. This is one ninth place on track, so you won't see it on this graphic, but you'll see it on this one right now as we go on board with the driver of Alistair Hay as they head themselves through towards that third chicane again. And you note the fact that actually lap number two, lap number three, Alistair Hay caught quite up to the rear of Jaden Thurlow, but it's been dropping back a little bit down in that dirty air as they head themselves down and towards Rabatta to complete their fifth lap of the motor race. Through the first part, you really need to get yourself good momentum through the second part because the run towards Sambrello is now so long. It's a longer pit lane. We took out the final chicane, so now it is a very long run down 
through the little kink before the first left hand and then the second part which is the real part of Tamburello itself. That time by Asta Hay, about a tenth of a second faster over Jaden Thurlow as they head themselves through um, Tamburello towards um, again, Villeneuve Chicanis. We've got ourselves now, John Hutchinson versus Andres Nilsson. Nilsson losing the position then. That is down into 18th place and side by side behind. Roboa is going to lose another place. It's going to put him down now into 20th place. Let's have a look at the replay from our aerial coverage. And Rob Boa, he actually loses an absolute ton of time then. The driver, Stephen Ruskin, just working himself to the outside, probably on the DRS. I talk about how long that run is when you're flat out here at Imola. And that is going to be Boa getting himself back into 19th place. Keeping it now with your battle for the race lead, it is Morgan Morand in the second place. Trying to get himself back the race lead that he had through pole position. And Sergio Macias behind. There's the gap with your top three drivers. They head themselves past the stripe again. From Victor Preto to Morgan Moran, the gap is 1.4 seconds. It is worth noting that last time by, Morgan Moran actually lost himself five tenths of a second over Victor Preto as they head down in through. Um, Tamborello through the left hand kink now towards Villeneuve once again. Behind, we've got ourselves a little side by side battle. We're going to cut to that one real quick. That is Claudia Candio and Alistair Hay. They were pretty close together as they worked past the start finish line. Here's a replay of this one. You'll see in the number 18 car that is Alistair Hay. Yellow car coming up right behind. That's Claudia Candio. Moves to the inside, gets up past done again. DRS enabled. Moving himself up into the 10th position on track. Manny Domingo running in fourth place. Still trying to put pressure actually on to Sergio Matias as they struggle through Alcaminorati up the hill. That number seven of 22 here. Manny Domingo, that last lap, he was a quarter of a second faster almost than Sergio Matias. And they're scrapping out third place on track. Let's not forget that Matias, he kind of got up into third and the early kind of tussles that were going on he then actually lost position to Morgan Moran more than anything else due to confusion um, as we had the moment where we had drive just falling down through the field due to having what we believe was a slow down penalty but we're looking at Moran this is for the race lead Moran looking to the outside not quite yet he's going to have to stay in line he closed right up that last time by. The gap was two attempts to a second as they came past the start finish line. As they come in towards Villeneuve again, Morand is holding station now, right behind. And look at that, he gained one second last lap. It was a not particularly off lap level, Victor Preto. It looks like he might just be overworking his tyres a little bit. But let's listen in for a couple of moments with that driver of Morgan Morand as they work through sector two. Exit of the third chicane, run down to the Ravazzo. Will Moran try and make the lunge now? Will he wait until the long straight away? Moran closes up, looks down to the inside, in towards Ravazzo. Morgan Moran, oh, pushing Victor Prater a little bit wide as a consequence into Ravazzo. This one is not over, ladies and gentlemen, because they're going to stay side by side as they come past the start finish line. And Victor Prato will retake the lead up the line. Now, will Morgan Moran have another little look in towards Tamparello corner? The aunt is going to be, he thinks about it, but no. Let's get ourselves a second look at that one. Let's see what happened with Victor Prato as we go on board of him. Oh, yeah, they do make a little bit of contact then. And Morgan Moran, I think, yeah, he just gets very loose on the exit, putting the power down on the exit of Ravazza. As a consequence of that, Victor Prato, despite going off, gets a better run through the corner. And they lost a second each that last time by in that one corner alone. Victor Prato does have the race lead again, though, and the gap is six tenths of a second.
Manny Domingo still putting the pressure. We're going to go to Domingo just for the moment as they head themselves through that third game. Look how much curve Manny Domingo took there compared to Macias. It helped him at the start, but then Domingo just couldn't get the throttle down on the exit of the corner. We've got a spinner. Alistair Hayes off. We have, there we are, we should see him just now. I think that is, it's a hard place for our TV camera to somehow get a look at us. So we're going to have to go on board with the driver of Alistair Hay. This is around Akuminarati. It's going to be the exit of Akuminarati. Yep, not through here. It's just as you come up the hill, put the power down, back end kicks out. Alistair Hay didn't hit anything. Just made it incredibly difficult for us to actually get him in any camera shot. There we are. We're cycling through and he's just, you see the crest at that part of the racetrack as well. We just couldn't capture him um, as he comes up the hill as well. It's literally the most difficult part on track for anyone to catch a camera. As Dan Bufton and John Hutchinson, they were just going side by side. Hutchinson getting up into what is going to be 15th position on track. We go back to the live footage. We go back to the battle for the race lead. We go back to Victor Preto versus Morgan Moran. Lap number 10 of 22 then. Here at Imola. Formula Renault 3.5. Friday night prime time. If you think that this one is going to be good. Well, why don't you just wait until we get ourselves over to Tuesday. And what will be the 10th season of the e nascar peak anti-free series powered by our racing daytona tuesday february 12th daytona the high 31 degree banked corners will play host to the first round of the championship we've had ourselves a draft we've had ourselves all the excitement of that and now it's time for drivers to go racing. 9 p.m. Eastern time, live on Racebot TV, streaming live on the iRacing Esports Network. Rand, that time by, didn't close up into Tamburello. Didn't make a move into Tamburello. And he's behind through Villeneuve and into Tosa as well. Behind, Sergio Macias um, has actually lost that position to Manu Domingo. So we'll see if we can get ourselves a replay of this one. See what happened. But Machia is now down into fourth place. Manny Domingo up into the fifth position. So this is how it's going to happen. This is down in towards Tamburello corner. Outside line. Easy does it there. Manny Domingo works himself up into the third position. That's one battle that might calm down for a bit now. We want to see whether Sergio Machias responds. Um, too many Domingos. Worth noting, of course, that these drivers need to be careful with the incident limit because it is a track where it's very easy to maybe just go a little bit off every so often, rack up those incident points, and before you know it, you'll be disqualified from the motor race. As we're just going to cycle down again. Stephen Gatesman, Matteo Calistani, that is going on as the battle for sixth position on track. Calistani in the number two machine. Stephen Gatesman in the number 15 as they cross the start finish line and head themselves towards turn number one. You can see that gap. It is closing, but nowhere near enough for Gatesman to make a move. He's still about six, seven car lengths back. As they head themselves through the exit then of Tamburello Corner into Villeneuve once again. Then you got to say, if, oh, we got a bit of a passing situation going on here that is with Hutchinson in the number 14 car getting himself past Pablo Lumbra Suarez so with Hutchinson right now is on the move in the number 17 car let's get ourselves a second look at this one on board past the start finish line it's going to be easy it's going to be quick Hutchinson then goes up one position and gets himself into 14th place on track so good action going on all the way through your field here today as I wanted to go turn my attention back to Danny Garcia Filo in the number six car he's been closing lap after lap after lap now over Sergio Machias let's ride on board of him for a moment
remains in fifth place then does Philo for the time being past the halfway point of this race we're already into the second half of this one here McCutchinson he's lost that position he's gained it again over Pablo Lombardo Suarez so those two continue to battle for 13th so 14th and 15th place on track to go on board you see the weaving there by Pablo Lombardo Suarez right put McCutchinson off his game the number 17 driver from Club UK and I'm having absolutely nothing of it. That's creating a pack of cars behind him because Dan Bufton getting involved. And before too long, you might see Andreas Nielsen put himself back into that one to make it a four car train. Let's go to your race lead though for the moment. And let's have a look on board with Morgan Moran versus Victor Preto. Pass the stripe onto lap number 14. Nothing gained through sector one for Moran. It's understandable. Unless you mess up the third corner at the entrance to Villeneuve like Moran did on lap number one. There's not really a lot you can gain or lose unless you go over the the, the bar sorry, over the barriers, over the, the, the curbing onto the higher part of the curb. Um, just having a look through your field. Only Quoka involved in a battle right now. This is close. This is going on for 10 plays on track with Claudio Candio. As they exit Tosa right now. Let's have a look back and see if anything happened as they head themselves through sector number one. The answer is only Quoker got very close through the Tamburello chicane. You can see he just puts a power down, gets a really good run out of Tamburello into Vilner, but actually just potentially tries to make his move a little bit too early, and as a consequence, cannot get up into P10. Danny Garcia Filo keeping himself in fifth position right now as they head themselves. Oh, wait, let's go back to Quoker. Quoker and Candio, they are going side by side. And Quoker, this time, looks as though he has got the position. Big power move there by Oli Quoker. Let's get ourselves on board of that one for you. Well, that's what happened then to Claudia Candio. He messed up down at 30 Kane over the big barriers let's have another look on board of candio exit of alcuminerati seems good then he hurts himself down into that 30 k let's listen in too high over both the first and the second parts of the curb Ali quoker right about now which is going to steam ahead up into 10th position on track and claudia candio now down into the 11th position Back to the race lead though. Back to Victor Preto, who's led now this entire race, bar the first three corners after Morgan Moran's horrible start to this event from pole position. Going off down at Vilna, but on board Moran again. One will wonder how long it's going to be before Moran tries to make an attack on the exit of Ravata. Two they come. And this time by actually Morgan Moran's only three times to a second back, so. DRS should be enabled here. You can see Morgan Moran getting closer. He's going to dance it down all the way onto the grass. We'll go Morgan Moran. And if you stay on board of him, he's going to try and take the inside line into Tamburello corner. And Victor Preto will give it to him. Oof, that was a close one. Let's get ourselves another look. And it's going to be right about now. We just get a perfect shot as they come past the start-finish line. Two wheels onto the grass. He gets back onto the track to speak to Preto. That would have been a heart-in-your-mouth moment if you're Morgan Moran. But he does power his way through at Tamburello to the race lead. But we say that Victor Preto is not out of this one yet. He has been losing time to Morgan Moran, but now he's in the draft. And who knows how much DRS opportunities he has left in this one. Up the hill they come towards up 30 Kane. The right for the left. 
I'd say Moran was actually a little bit better putting the power on that time by. With actors are coming. Lap traffic is ahead as well. Victor Prado does not get a good run that time by though. He's down to six times to a second. And make that probably seven times to a second before too long. So for Victor Prato, as they come past the stripe, yeah, not a good lap then for Prato in the number four car. He needs to regroup and see whether we can have another shot over Morgan Morand. Behind, Stephen Gatesman, Mattia Calistani. This is going on for sixth place on track. Stephen Gatesman looks very close. He thinks about going down to the inside in towards Sambarello Corner. No. The camera angle is not that good for us. Let's have another look on board. Stephen Gatesman, as he comes past the start finish line, he gets very close with two car lengths then in towards Tamburello. Yeah, I was going to say, the camera angle just wasn't nice with then. It would have been a bold move for Gatesman to try and make that lunge down into Tamburello corner. He decides not to do so. Discretion being the better part of Valor in that instant. Behind, Oli Quoka and Jadon Thurlow, they are battling out for ninth place on track so a lot of little battles going on so let's just have a little look through as they come down towards the left hand at Piatella the look down towards Aquamino Raleigh and for Adi Quoker gap is still six tenths of a second right now Stephen Gatesman Matthew Kanastani well Gatesman let's see if he's going to get a good run actually this time through the two Ravatas Revat to one, complete. Revat to two, complete. Stephen Gatesman. Nah, not a good run there at all. He lost two tenths to a second on the exit of Revat to two. So that will put him behind as they come past the start finish line again. And you can see time lost for Stephen Gatesman. Half a second compared to Matteo Calistani. Well, Morgan Morant's got himself now into a nice little bit of a rhythm. As we've got five laps to go. He's pulled out a bit of time now over Victor Preto. Gap up to eight tenths of a second on track as they head themselves through that left-hander. The long, long left-hander before they come down that magical hill into one of the toughest corners, I think, in all of Italian motorsports. And then towards that third chicane, they'll head themselves again. Behind Filo and Macias, that one's still going on. I expect Filo to start putting some pressure on in the next couple of laps. Well, there's only five laps to go, so he's going to have to start putting some pressure on before too long. As they head themselves down in towards Ravazza. That's it, Calistani. 2.6 behind Danny Garcia, Filo, Filo uh, six times to a second behind Sergio Machias. As they pass the start finish line, four laps for them to go as they head themselves towards Tamburello once again. Just having a look through the field, give you an update on retirees, shall we? Villa Lapala out this event, as was Russell and Sabatov. That was on lap number one of this event, Stephen Chantel also out on lap number one uh, as i believe he might not have actually taken the start of this motor race we've had one other driver coming towards pit road that has been toby and furla in the number 14 machine all other drivers are circulating and in moderately emphasis on the word moderately good health as we stick them with danny garcia I feel like he looks really good that time for piratella Turn number eight on track before Aquamino Raleigh, the right-hander. Slow it down into a second right-hander. And then bring it up to speed once again. As you head towards Variante Alta, the third corner. Third chicane even on this track. The right, the left, the bumps. The trackometer going up then with Danny Garcia Filo. He's five times to a second back right now. When we've seen him in this position previously, he just couldn't get a run out of Ravazza, maybe by going a little bit further back, he's trying to use the dirty air, or the lack of dirty air, to get a better run. And actually, he does get a bit of a better run here. Gap remained at six tenths of a second. Past the start-finish line. 
Danny Garcia Filo then remains in P number five, but only has three laps to go if he wants to get himself more point, more I rating in this championship. Alistair Hay with Andreas Nielsen. If we talk about how Nielsen's coming back into this battle, well, it's kind of all just calmed down a bit now. Um, Drummond Richardson has pulled himself up, a bit of gap in P number 14. Hayes falling down um, to P number 16. Andres Nielsen into 15. So it's all really calmed down in your mid-packs now. A lot of people just driving for home, uh, except for Hay looking to maybe try and get himself back into the top 15. They cross the start-finish line, 15th and 16th place on track. Let's just go on board quickly with Alistair Hay. And no, nothing in Stamborelli. Back then, we go to Filo versus Machias. And I think that for Filo, he's just losing time where it matters right now. And that is out of the Variante Alta. He's just not being able to put the power down there. And consequently, he's losing two seconds a lap. Sorry, two tenths of a second a lap. Sergio Machias has got that gap now almost up to one second as we come to two laps to go. Filo will need to use everything in his arsenal. DRS, every single corner, nailed, hammering the curbs. But as it stands, not likely going to happen. Gap remains at seven tenths of a second. Victor Preto, though, is not giving up as we head himself through Tosa for the penultimate time. He does so get a lot of snap overs there on the exit of the corner. You can see how he's really trying to work the wheel on the exit of Tosa. Now into Priatella, down the hill. First of the right handers is pretty much flat out and then you break into Acumidorati really for the second part. Build up the speed, build up the speed, build up the speed and then break into the Variante Alta. A lap and a bit to go. I'm not sure. Oh, my word, Victor Preto spins. Well, now he's definitely not going to go for victory. He may not even be on the podium. Manu Domingo goes past. Victor Preto will remain in third place. Just replay coming up. So here we are, and these are those curbs we've been talking about all day long. He just hits a second. Actually, it almost looks as though he checks up to avoid running over the rear of Morgan Moran. I want to actually have a look then on board of Morgan Moran to see whether he had any issues of his own in towards the outer. Very heavy of the curbs, yeah. He was slow getting the power down, but... He was lucky that he can see just smoke in the background for him. And all of a sudden, Morgan Moran has exited Tosa on his final lap. And he's got himself now a six-second advantage. Claudia Candio having a little battle with Thomas Knoll. Final lap of the motor race. Candio right now is behind Justin Thurlow. Sorry, just turn that one around. Yeah, so actually Candio has lost 10th place to Jadon Thurlow. Thurlow now into that top 10 position. But let's go back to your race leader. Let's go back to Morgan Moran. Let's go down the hill into Ravatsa for the final time for Morgan Moran. One more corner to go. Morgan Moran. Well, he started on pole position. He didn't make it easy for himself, but he comes home to take victory here. Formula Renault 3.5s at Imola. I want to go back because I believe that Manny Domingo may have run out of fuel. Yeah. Manny Domingo runs out of fuel. Victor Preto will take home second place. Heartbreak for Manny Domingo, but he does keep third over Sergio Machias then. So a little bit of disappointment. The last lap for Manny Domingo. What a shame for him. But let's have a look then 
at your final race results. We're just going to check in. Claudio Candio, he's done his race. I think everyone now has come past the start finish line. Let's give you a look at your final race results. Morgan Moran starts on pole position, falls down to P4, works himself back up to the race lead with hold, late race pressure from Victor Preto to claim victory. Victor Preto comes home in second place, 7.7 .7 seconds back. Preto ended up having incidents of his own with two to go, spinning it down at the Variante Alta after leading the most laps here today. Manu Domingo, third place. Incident for him on the final lap of the event. Sergio Machias, fourth place. Danny Garcia Filo in fifth. Matteo Calistani, sixth. Stephen Gatesman, seventh. Oscari Wren in eighth place. Oli Quoker in ninth. And Jadon Thurlow rounds out your top ten. Claudio Candio in 11th place. Thomas Knoll in 12th. Diego Gill in 13th place. John Mitch Hutchinson in 14th. Andres Nielsen rounds out your top 15 wrestler results up on your screen for you now. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, subscribe to the iRacing Esports Network right now if you want to catch more racing from the very best sim racing events there is. Marcel, LSR TV, Podium Esports, Apex Racing UK, the Global Sim Racing Channel, and also Sim Speed and more. Check out the iRacing Esports Network and subscribe on YouTube today. Well, that is pretty much all we've got time for here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for being a part of our coverage. Shout out as ever to the people who get it done for us. I'm Will Vincent, and we'll talk to you all next time. Good night from Imola.